Hi, this is your instructor, Teresa Pelkey. Welcome to our class. Welcome to our next class. In this class, we will learn about functions. A function is a block of code that we can reuse. It is executed when you call it somewhere in your code. This function is called when an event occurs. Event meaning some user action. Functions can have parameters which allow us to pass arguments to the function. These terms, parameters, and arguments are used interchangeably. So don't get overly concerned on whether it's a parameter or an argument technically, but I will explain that later. Functions can also return a value. You name a function with the same naming rules as when you name variables. This is an example of an anonymous function, and we have been looking at this now for several classes. So here we have window.onLoad. This is the load event of the window object. And we preface the name of the event by on. It is calling an anonymous function. Notice the function has no name. All of the statements inside the opening and curly braces will be executed when the page loads. Now we're going to look at another way of calling or creating what is called an anonymous function. It's called anonymous because it's stored in a variable as opposed to being created using the function keyword, which we will see later on. So let's take a look at this code. var say hello. I have just declared a variable. I am storing a function in this variable. And the code inside the opening and curly braces that will be executed would be this alert. So, we can store a function in a variable, and this is termed an anonymous function. Now, we need to call that. One way we would call that is by referencing the name of the function with parentheses. Now, whether or not you put the parentheses next to the name of the, the variable depends, number one, on whether there are parameters, number two, on where that's being called. So let's take an, let's look at an example where we don't use the parentheses. If it was just so let's take a look at this example here. Here we have var say hello equals function. This is the same code that we had on the, the previous slide. We are storing a function in the variable named say hello. Now, remember that all references to the document of the page have to be called after the page loads. So here we have our anonymous function with our DOM references. Now the last line here, button.onClick equals say hello. Here we have the name of an ID, which is BTN, referencing an object, dot on click the event handler handling the click event equals say hello so it is calling that variable which is storing the function here we do not have the parentheses so when it's called directly from an event there are no parentheses if it's called within another function the parentheses would be there all right I want you to Pay close attention to this. It's very nice, and the author of the book is using it, so I want to explain it. What, what this is, this is a function that allows you to very easily reference an element on the page, rather than having to write document.getElementById over and over again. 
All right, so let's take a look. This is an anonymous function. Var dollar equals function, opening in curly braces. The dollar is the name of the function, excuse me, the variable. All right, this variable can have a dollar as a name. That's allowed. All right, this anonymous function is stored in this variable. Now, notice this function inside the parentheses has a placeholder or a variable. That is technically a parameter. Now, id is a, is a variable that means that we have to pass a value to it. Inside the curly braces, we have return document dot get element by id. Now, this so by passing an argument to it, such as um, a real id, such as if I had a text box id equals first name, it would be in quotations first name, and that would be passed to this function. And what that would do, it would return an object reference. So how that function would be called? you would have a dollar sign around the expression of the, the name of the ID. All right, let's take a look at how this actually works. Here we have our var dollar equals function, which we saw on the previous slide. Now, how we would actually use that we could store that reference in a variable. So here we have var first name equals dollar in parentheses and id. So this is the function dollar. All right. So all what we're doing essentially we're we're using an id value and we're putting it as the argument and the function is doing the rest. So rather than saying var first name equals document dot get element by id in parentheses first name dot value. This is a very shorter way of doing it. And by the way, the um, the id first name that we're referencing is the text box down below here. The author is doing this in a lot of the examples. You're more than welcome to do it also. You're not, I'm not requiring you to use this. I'm just trying to explain it. All right, in addition to anonymous functions, we have named functions. A named function is declared using the function keyword. So here we have function say hello. And the name of the function will always be followed by an opening and closing parenthesis. If there are parameters, there will be some variable placeholders. If not, they will be empty. And here again, inside the opening and closing curly braces, this is the statement to be executed. All right, so here we have the exact same code as we did with the anonymous function. The only difference is I'm writing it as a named function. So that the function is created. And by the way, all functions do not have to be inside the code that needs to be loaded after the document object model is loaded. So we always have our onload event calling references to the page. Functions don't have to be included there. They can be included anywhere. So here we would actually reference that function the same way we did if it were anonymous. And because it is being called from the on click event, we do not include the parentheses after the name of the function. All right, let's take a look at a named function that uses a parameter. First, let's take a look at the function itself. Here we have the keyword function. The name of the function is say hello. Notice inside the parentheses, there is a word name. That is a variable or a placeholder. Okay, that just means that I'm passing some, that is a parameter. It just means that I'm going to pass a value to that parameter called name. Now, wherever we see that parameter called name inside the code, inside the opening and curly braces, whatever value was passed to that initially will obviously be passed to it inside the code. 
All right, so let's take a look. When the page loads at the very top, here I have var my name equals Teresa. All right, this is a global variable because it's being declared in the, the, the script tags. It's not being declared inside the function. Variables declared inside the function would only be valid in that function, and this is called scope. And I'll talk about that again. All right, so I have just stored the value Teresa into the variable my, called my name. Now, at the bottom in the onload statement, we have a function call, say hello, and in this, this time we need the parentheses because we're passing it a value. What value are we passing it? We're passing it a variable. The variable my name holds a value Teresa. So that, that value is being passed to the function. So the, the, the parameter in this function called name will now hold the value being passed by my name, which is Teresa, and ultimately our alert would say hello Teresa. So this is the procedure and the concepts behind passing values to functions, how the value is passed to the parameter. All right, let's take a look at a named function that returns a value. Okay, so here's our function, show sum. It's named, it's created using the function keyword, and it has the parentheses, although there are no parameters. Inside the function, we have a statement, and we have a return. So that function will return a value, will return the value of x. Now, how do we make use of that? Okay, in the next line, and this is the typical way that JavaScript programmers do this. They will store the value of the function here on the right in a variable. So they're creating a variable to hold the value of that function. And then they can just call that variable, which will display the value of the function, as which is being done in this alert. Now, we also could have put the whole expression show sum inside that alert. That would have worked also. This is a little bit cleaner working with variables rather than a longer possible expression. Okay, so here's what is called scope. Variables will have either low, what is called local or global scope. So if a variable is defined inside a function, it, it is called local scope. It's only available within that function. Anything defined outside or at the global or top level is called a global function, which means it can be accessed from anywhere. So watch your variable names, and the best rule of thumb is don't use the same variable name twice. Okay, here's a little gotcha at the bottom. If you declare a variable without using var, and you can do that, I can just say my name equals Teresa, and that's valid. It will work without using var. Technically, by default, that has become a global variable. So if you're inside a function and you declare a variable without using var, it will become global and maybe at some point in time you might have a problem because things might not work the way you think they're working. So always use var. It, event handlers. This is a term that can be confusing. All right, an event handler is typically a function. All right that is executed when an event occurs. So you hear, you hear this thing connecting events in e to an event handler. All right, the event handler is the function that will handle the event. All right, and they're attached to an event essentially by an equal sign. All right. Okay, so we have events that are essentially user actions or page loads. Functions are executed or called when an event occurs. All right, events are connected to the function. The function is called the event handler. All right, you might also hear the term the function handles the event. In JavaScript, we have click events. 
double click events, page loads, page unloads, mouse overs, mouse out, mouse up, mouse down, mouse move, entering an input field which is called focus, exiting that which is called blur, submitting a form which is called submit, key press, key press down, key press up, there's a lot of them. So the event in JavaScript, these events are preceded by the word on. We will see later on in jQuery, they are not preceded by the word on. They're called for what they are. In JavaScript, we precede the name of an event with on. All right, so this is the syntax for calling an event. We have this object variable, whatever the object is, that is being affected by this event. The event is triggering, being triggered on. Dot on underscore the event of the name on click for an example equals the event handler name which is essentially a function so this is pretty much what we've been looking at all along so to take a look at our code here var say hello equals function this is an anonymous function it's anonymous because the, this function is being stored in a variable called say hello now how do we hand, how, how, how does that function called. Okay, the function, which is called an event handler, is handling the event. What event? Let's take a look. Button, which is the object, dot on click. This is the event. Equals function. So when the button is clicked on, the event is handled by an event handler, which is a function. All right, here's some more event syntax. Okay, document dot get element by ID BTN, assuming that's a button somewhere, dot on click equals do this. All right, so when someone clicks on the button, it is calling the name of a function called do this. And that can be an anonymous function or a name function. All right, so here's our button down below. Okay, so the button, which is an object in the page, when we click on it, okay, that event is handled by the event handler, which is the function. All right, now, in the normal web page, many events are being handled. And by the way, events happen all the time. We just don't handle them. The only time we handle them is if we have a function that is being called when a specific event occurs. All right, so let's take a look at the bottom of this slide here window.onload equals function. This is something we've been doing all along. Here we have two object references to button number one, button number two. Okay, the next line of code, button.onclick equals say hello. All right, so when this first button is clicked, we're calling this function. Next line of code, button.onclick equals say hello too. So when the second button is clicked, we're calling a different function. Those two functions are somewhere inside the opening and closing script tag. They do not have to be in this onload anonymous function here, okay? Because they're going to be called after the page loads anyway. Something's going to click on them and call them. So they don't have to be in here. The only thing that has to be inside this block of code are page references.